Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. And with the Spirit. We take some silence, and in that silence we prepare our own spirits for Eucharist on this Sunday morning. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick and the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give life to those who call out to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you save us from all evil. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and one day bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Together we praise our God and pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, and let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after. And make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I'd like to call our children and facilitators to come forward at this time. Carol, receive this word of God, take it with you, proclaim it, share it with these young lives. Help them to become comfortable and confident that we belong to a God who loves us in all things. Into your hands today is entrusted a mighty work to go with the peace of Christ. Please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, 
for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other God except to the Lord. The word of the Lord.
according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. In two out of the three readings today, we hear the stories of leprosy. Biblically, leprosy meant a whole range of skin diseases, not like the disease that we call Hansen's disease today. No matter though, any type of leprosy was a nightmare. Back in Jesus' day when the disease appeared, you had to go to see a priest and he would declare you unclean. And that meant you could no longer be with your family, you could no longer work, you could no longer live at your home, or even in town. You were outcast to the hills to live with others who were deemed unclean. It was truly thought that you had done something to anger God and you were being punished. And as long as the condition persisted, you were not cast. In our first reading, Naaman, after he's convinced by his servants to do as Elisha tells him, God cures his leprosy. And he's so grateful that he wants to give Elisha a gift. But knowing that he was not responsible, that the healing came from God, Elisha would not accept the gift. Even despite Naaman's pleading, he did not give in. In our Gospel reading, we hear the familiar story of the ten lepers who cry out to Jesus. And he sends them on their way to see the priest, and he heals them. But only one comes back to thank him. And Jesus asks what happened to the other nine. I gave this gospel passage a lot of thought and meditation, and even though my thoughts kept directing me towards the nine ungrateful, my heart kept directing me towards the one, the one leper, and the idea of gratefulness. And as I prayed about this and what message I was being directed to give, I thought about all of us, all of us here today, sitting in the pews as we sit here week after week. And the question that came to my mind, why? Why do we come here week after week? I truly believe it's because of our own leprosy, our own sinfulness. We come here because God has blessed us through His forgiveness, through His love for each of us. And we recognize it. And we come here to show Him how grateful we are, how much we appreciate all that He's given us in our lives. And when we're here, we know that we're not looked upon as an outcast. We belong. We belong because we're with family. 
our extended family, the family of God. And we're not alone in our sinfulness. And we're definitely not alone in our gratefulness. Now it probably would have been a lot easier for that one leper to, to continue on with the other nine and go show himself to the priest. But he recognized the fact that his healing came through the love and the compassion that Jesus had for him. And so, he returned to the source of the healing. And that's what each of us does when we come here to Mass each week. It'd be much easier if we didn't have to get up in the morning and get cleaned up and come here. But we realize the importance of thanking God and praising Him for all of our blessings. Or else we wouldn't be here. But I ask you something else. Is there something else that we can do besides just attending Mass? Is there someone we know that isn't here with us today? Maybe a friend, a neighbor, a family member, maybe even one of our own children. Coming to Mass and thanking God is important. But it's even more important to reach out to others. To tell our story to, to those that are away from the church. To help them realize that our God is, is their God too. And that no matter what's going on in their lives, no matter what the situation is, He's there for them. And we're there for them. That we're willing to help them. And that Jesus is waiting to reach out to them with healing and forgiveness, just like the ten lepers. This is what we're called to do through our baptism, to spread the good news, to evangelize about the wonderful things God does for us, to be church to others church to those around us. A lot of people out there who've fallen away from the church and away from God and possibly just need to hear what a difference He's made in our lives. We don't have to be preachers. We don't have to sit there and talk and talk and talk. Many times Many times we can just do it by our actions. By just simply showing others that we care, that we're concerned, that we have Jesus in our hearts. It's not difficult. All we have to do is strive to live our lives the way Jesus lived His. By loving God and loving our neighbor. As a deacon, and a fire department chaplain, I've had the opportunity to, to minister to a number of people in the communities when they've had something really tragic happen. When they've really felt that they were at the lowest point in their lives. There doesn't seem to be any hope. Things like losing their homes in a fire, or losing a loved one through accidents, suicides, illness. We've sat and we've talked. We've cried. We've prayed together. And many times we just sit quietly and hold hands. And a few times I've had the opportunity to meet with some of these people afterwards. And I've been thanked for being there and just letting them know that there's someone out there that cares. I don't do it for those thanks. I don't do it for the recognition. I do it because I want to be of service to others. I do it to live out my baptismal promise and to show God's love to others. We come here week after week 
to say thanks to God. As we should. But we can do more. Pope Francis challenges us, challenges all of us to go out and evangelize, to spread the good news, to be especially attentive to the poor and the downtrodden. I ask that we all take some time this week, some time to pray to Jesus and ask Him to show us other ways that we can pray, pay gratitude to God our Father. And as we come up here to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, let us not forget, most importantly, to thank God for giving us His Son to save us. Catechetical Sunday recognizes in a special way all those involved in catechetical ministry within the parish from preschool through adults. Catechesis is about faith formation and calling others into a deeper relationship with our loving God and his entire family. Each person called to this ministry by proclaiming the gospel message through word and deed, can open the door of faith and empower all those that they encounter. We invite all those who have already begun to serve as teachers and leaders of formation through the ministries of religious education classes, youth ministry, my time with Jesus, our Parish Day School, RCIA, Vacation Bible School, Scripture Study, PWD, and Sacramental Preparation to please stand and come forward. Enlightened by God's word and teachings of the church, leaders pass on to others an initiation or a deeper formation in those realities they themselves have learned as truths to be lived and celebrated together in liturgy. In this celebration, we will bless the name of the Lord for giving us such co-workers and pray that through the Holy Spirit, they will receive the grace they need in their service to the church to this parish of St. Joseph's. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has called us to be wise stewards of the good news. This requires conviction, hope, enthusiasm, and love. And now I ask you, teachers, catechists, and hearers of God's word, are you willing to exercise the ministry of catechesis at St. Joseph's Parish? I'd ask that all of us extend an arm of blessing as we pray over them. <laughs> Loving God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us and to proclaim his message of faith, hope, and love to all nations. In your goodness, bless our sisters and brothers who have offered themselves as leaders for your church. Strengthen them with your gifts that they may teach by word and by an example the truth that comes from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before they return to their places, let us show them a sign of our support.
God's mercy, we offer our prayers and petitions. Lord, heal your church from sin and division. Guide the Pope, bishops, and all Christians in the ways of unity and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, heal the nations from injustice and violence. Help leaders to secure peace and harmony among peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, heal the land of your birth. Strengthen the resolve of those who work for lasting peace in the Middle East. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, heal, heal the faithful from indifference. Guide those who spread the gospel, especially our teachers and catechists. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, heal the sick, especially those we now lift up by name. Care and comfort them in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, heal any pain we hold in our hearts. Hear the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers at this Mass, especially for the repose of the souls of Deborah Power, Leo Kilbride, and Max and Lucille Divine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our October Year of Faith prayer intention, for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you heal those suffering in body and spirit. Hear our prayers spoken today and those held in the silence of our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joseph and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and the entire people that your Son has gained for you. Graciously listen to the prayers of the family that you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Him, with Him, and Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us collect our prayer. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you. May all of us be blessed today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.